Hello, welcome to Covenant Presbyterian Church here in Nashville, Tennessee, where we have this magnificent pipe organ behind me. My name is Elizabeth Smith, and I have the great privilege of playing this organ each week for services. This organ was installed in 2009 by the Fisk Company in Massachusetts, that's F-I-S-K. They call it their Opus 134. So if you want some more information about the organ, you can always go to their website, Fisk Organ Opus 134, and you can get the entire stop list and more information about the organ. It was especially made for this room. So if you particularly like this organ and you want one just like it, you can't have it because each one is designed especially for the space. I'll give you a few of the basic things about it. It is 20 tons. 48 feet tall, and right now it has almost 3,000 pipes. So when you look at the organ, you can actually only see about 2% of the actual pipes. You will actually might be surprised to hear that this organ is actually not complete, it's not finished. We have almost 3,000 pipes, but there are about eight rows of pipes that are planned for, but not yet installed. So when everything's put in, we'll have about 3,500 pipes. The largest, of course, are some of the ones you might see up front, 32 feet tall. And of course, they get smaller and smaller until they're about the size of a pencil or a finger. Pipe organs have been used in Christian worship for a long, long time, for hundreds of years, because it's based on wind. So it's just like the voice, and it, it marries very well with singing for a congregation, this particular organ can get very soft, so that like on sil when we uh, sing Silent Night, Christmas Eve, it can lead the entire congregation really with just one set of pipes, one little row of pipes, and get softer and softer. And as you build up the organ and get louder and louder, the most thrilling thing for an organist is on Easter Sunday morning, when we sing Christ the Lord is Risen Today, and it fills the room, and even the person in the very last pew up there at the top of the balcony has a sense of the feel for the sound. They can sing along and be a part of the entire congregation. So I'd like to go down to the organ now and take a look at the console and explain a little bit about the beautiful sounds we have here. So here we are at the console of the organ. Um, this is the part you will see me here every Sunday. Of course, we have three keyboards, which are called manuals, from the Latin word for hand, and one pedal board for the Latin word for foot. So actually, this organ is one, two, three, four organs put together in various sections, all playable by this one console. The um, bottom manual is called the Great. It's the Great Organ because it was really the first one developed when they first started developing organs. And that's the ones where the pipes are way up in that second section. They speak directly out to the church, to the congregation, to the people in the balcony. And it's probably the loudest part of the organ. It's to um, have congregational singing, to fill up the church, fill up the sound. But let me show you a little bit about the great organ. It's controlled by these things over here called stops. They ought to be called go because they make them go, but they're called stops. Each one of these then will control a whole row of pipes, one for every key. 61, I think, here. So here's the basic sound of the organ. It's called a principal because it's the principal sound of an organ. And even with this one row of pipes, you could probably fill the room. And then as we pull out more stops, I'll pull out more principals. out even more. You 
per the, the expression probably, pull, it out, pull out all the stops. Well, it comes from a pipe organ, and it means to pull everything out and be really festive, really loud. I'll take those off for now. Also on the grate, we have a couple of trumpets. Um, A couple of other flutes and some other things. So that's the big organ. That's the main part of the organ. The next keyboard up is called the positive, and it's controlled by these stops over here. These are the ones that are right above my head. You can see part of the pipes here. It's a smaller version of the grate, and it really helps the choir because it's the pipes closest to them. So while the grate is headed out to the main part of the sanctuary, these pipes are ones that the choir or a soloist or an instrumentalist could hear. And so it sort of fills in that sound and makes them a part of that. So it's a bit of a smaller version. Here are the principles on that, on the positive. This particular set of keys also has a really unusual sound. It's got a clarinet, which is a beautiful solo sound. It has one of my favorite sounds called a cornet, where you actually pull out five sets of pipes. One, two, three, four, five. And it makes this lovely sound. It's one of my favorites, and I hope I don't overuse it, but it's... Very colorful. And then on this one, we also have something called the tuba mirabilis, the wonderful, amazing, gigantic trumpet. It's probably the loudest thing on the whole organ. And we'd use it, of course, for Easter. We'd use it for a bride coming down the aisle or any festive sounds. So here's the tuba. Wow, you hear the echo of the room, it's beautiful. And then the last uh, keyboard up here, the last manual is called the swell. It's kind of funny because we have a great and a swell. It seems like we need an outstanding or extraordinary or something. But it's called a swell for a very specific reason. It was developed in England. And these pipes were at the very top of the organ. And they're put there in their own little box. And they have some shutters that open and close to make it a little bit louder or softer so it can swell louder and then get soft again. It's controlled with these things down here that look like gas pedals, if you can see that. It just goes up and down. So I'm gonna start with it closed. I'm gonna pull out their trumpets up there in the swell, open it and close it. You can hear a little bit about how it gets louder and softer. And this is where I have some of my string sounds that we'll use for Silent Night. And I can get quieter and quieter with this as I close the swell box. We have a congregation here who loves to sing in four-part harmony, a cappella. So it's a thrill for me to be able to drop out in a song and have them sing. So let me just finish up with the third verse, say, of Silent Night, going into the fourth. Beautiful sounds. We also have lots of flutes, lots of trumpets. I have a gorgeous oboe, so if I'm ever playing Gabriel's oboe. And then one of the most important stops you'll hear on Christmas and Easter, at any time there's a hymn that mentions stars. This is called a Zimbelstern, and it sounds like this.
It's actually a little series of bells that go around. On some organs, but unfortunately not this one, it looks like a little star at the top of the organ and it spins around and around. But here we can't see it, but we can definitely hear it. And then we get to the pedal, of course, which is the fun thing. I play with my feet. I do have special shoes. Uh, they're leather, leather on the bottom. They're narrow as possible, so they can slide around. And we try to keep it as clean as we can because we certainly don't want to damage the pedal. Um, this, is, of course, has the largest pipes on the organ. There are some pieces that are written um, just, for, just for the pedal because you can play chords. You could play melodies. Let's see. The largest pipes on the organ are going to be those that are 32 feet. You'd never use them by themselves, probably, because that would just be silly. But listen to them. I have two 32-foot pipes. Here's the quiet one. You can almost not even hear the pitch, but when you add it to other things, it just um, closes it in, say. You can actually feel it more than hear it. The other one is a big trumpet or a trombone tuba sound. You can definitely hear this one. <laughs> so on Easter Sunday morning, here for a playing. <laughs> That's a lot of fun. You see all these little knobs here. Uh, these are just called pistons or presets. If I'm going from something very quiet, I set these up myself. Say I'm going from a quiet offertory. and suddenly it's time for the doxology. I hit a piston. So I'd like to go inside a bit and show you things that you don't usually get to see. So let's go through the secret door, the secret passageway, and see what there is to see. There's a lot to look at in here, but as you can tell, it is so beautifully built, very well built. I have a poster here of what the organ's gonna look like. This is where I was at the console, and we're just right behind that door. And as you can see, it's got a lot to it, this 48 feet. The blower, which is in the basement, which we can't really see here, will send air then to all of the rest of the organ. And the main difference in this organ and one that Bach or Mozart or Pachelbel would have played is that we have an electrified blower. So we, it's, it's run with electricity. In the old days before electricity, you actually had someone to pump the organ as you played or as you learned notes, that poor person. And you still see some organs, there's one in Nashville actually where it'll have the blower signal. So when you're ready for the hymn or for the postlude, you pull that out and the person would go below and start pumping. There's still a few organs uh, where you can still pump. Uh, it's usually an alternate source of energy. So if the electricity goes out, you can still play the organ. And that's the main difference then between an organ today and one that Bach would have played many years ago. He would recognize so much of this organ so we can see the various layers, the positive, the great, and the swell. I told you those shutters that we uh, were able to get louder and softer. It's all in that box there. I wanted to show you a few things in this room. We've got some of the biggest pipes here right behind me. They're wooden pipes. The pipes are either wooden 
or metal. And this is actually one big version of a little wooden pipe. So, the air coming in, coming out, and that's how you'd tune it. So this is quite a large one here. These are the main pipes on this level. The other things we have here are um, part of the bellows that supply the air. But what I really wanted to show you is what's behind the console where I'm playing. So I'll be playing out there. This particular organ is called a, a tracker organ or a mechanical organ. Again, it's one that Bach would have recognized. He had the same kind of organ. So as I play a note, it has these things called trackers that actually go all the way up by a very complicated system and open up the pipes underneath so the air can come in. So that the more pipes you have playing, if you pull out all the stops on Easter, a little bit harder to actually mash down the keys because you've got more pipes that you're actually opening. So it's a very sensitive instrument and it's my favorite kind. So <laughs> I thought I'd play a little bit and just let you see what happens with um, the trackers. And it's also continued over here where it's taking things all the way up to the pipes. There are lots of them. So I'll go play a little bit and um, you can see if you can see things happening. <laughs> One of the last secrets of the organ is back here in the ambulatory behind the organ. And so let me go down and show you this special place. So this is also a part you can kind of get in and see straight up. There's always room on the bench for young people to see this magnificent organ, play a few notes, and maybe stir in them the same thing that was stirred in me when I was a young child. I started playing in the ninth grade, and um, it's a great joy. So thank you again. <laughs>